Hello and welcome to our second LLN Robot System walkthrough video. Um, this video is designed for administration users, not for enrollment officers or LLN specialists. Um, this will talk about some of the higher level system settings and functions that are available on the system. Um, if you are an enrollment officer or LLN specialist, please refer to the appropriate video we have available that walks through all of the system usage uh, and system functions as opposed to the settings. Uh, for or for all administration users, it's probably important that you watch both videos, so please ensure that you've seen the other one or will watch it afterwards. Uh, okay, so system settings. Um, there are four functions within the system settings. There's manage system settings, manage learner form, manage email templates, and manage users. Also, administration users have access to the analytics, and we'll walk through each of these functions now. Um, so organization information. Uh, this is data around your company and on the things that will be exported from the system. So company name, that will show up on all of the reports. Um, learner correspondence name, that can be your company name or individual within your organization's name. That will be on all of the outbound emails to learners. Learner correspondence phone number is the same again. And same with learner correspondence email, that will be the email address that the learners can respond to uh, in response to any emails they get from the system. Learner to redirection URL is where the quiz will redirect the learner when they're finished. So in most cases, it's probably best to have that as your company URL. Uh, ensure that you put in the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash before your URL address. And if you do change this, it might pay for you to run through a quiz and double check that it's taking your learners to the right space when it's finished. Um, admin correspondence name and admin correspondence email are uh, all, um, again, system changes you can make and they are what shows up on the emails that go to your internal administrators. Uh, any of this can be changed by clicking on the edit button, making the changes and clicking save. Uh, quiz settings. So the default quiz level, this is the uh, quiz level that can be accessed from the login page, which where you log in. There's the big button on the left where learners can also log in. Um, and whichever one of these you have highlighted, that's the quiz that they'll access from there. Um, here you can also toggle on and off whether you receive daily quiz summary completion emails or instant notification on those. Quiz links. Um, these are some URL links that you can embed into emails that you send out to learners. Um, and what these are is these will give them access directly to any of these particular three particular quizzes. The Vet Student Loans quiz cannot be accessed in that fashion. It can only be accessed via an invitation, um, via the single learner or multiple learner invitation module. Uh, but any of these can be used as part of an enrolment process. Um, so feel free to use them as required. Uh, the API is an externally facing API that will export data to third party student management systems. Um, the data that it will export is the data that you find in the results table around learner name, email address, and scores. Uh, it will not export any of the reports. They're done separately and generated as PDFs. Um, for you to be able to use the API, you'll need to contact your student management system provider. Um, you need to turn it on within the system like I've just done here. Give them access to the API authentication key um, and also give them access to the documentation that helps them to implement it, which is by clicking this button here. Um, and that will open up all of the information around the API uh, that you can give access to to your student management system provider so they can link it to your student management system if required. Part two of this is the learner form. Um, so this is the information that you require your learners to fill out uh, at the start of the quiz. Um, there are some standard fields in this which are a minimum requirement. So there's the learner ID, which can be a USI or a student number or anything that's appropriate. This can be skipped, it's not mandatory, um, but it has to stay within the system. First name, last name, and email are all mandatory. Anything outside that you can add yourself. So um, in this one, for example, we have date of birth, location, phone number, and site. These are all different types. Um, so the date of birth one is purely just a text field. Um, you can decide to make it mandatory or not. Um, we have things like location. This is actually done as a drop-down field. And what you can do with this is um, add in extra drop-down items just by hitting enter. Um, and it can be as simple as that. And when the learner clicks on them, it gives them these options to choose from. Click update and that'll save it. Again, phone number, um, 
or site, all of those are available. If there's one you don't want to continue to have in there, you can just delete the field, confirm that, and that field's removed. Now, none of these will actually show, and when you're finished, you hit save, and that'll update the, the learner form. Anything outside the learner ID, first name, last name, and email will not show on the results screen. It actually shows in the tab, uh, in the um, in the learner module in here, so it gives you the extra information in that space. But you can type in any of those things as a search string and it will search for those even though they don't display on screen. Um, so please just bear that in mind. So that's your uh, learner, learner form there. As I said, you can edit that to suit whatever your needs are. Um, and all of this information that goes in here will be exportable via the API. Um, the next section we need to look at is the managing email templates. So we have the emails that go out via the invitation module um, are fully editable. And there's one for the ACSF level quizzes and one for the VSL quizzes. Um, these, these have uh, all kinds of variables in them, such as company name, learner first name, uh, a link to the quiz, um, and learner correspondence email and all of these things. You can edit these to suit whatever you like. Uh, they all will include your company logo that you give us at setup. Um, you can make changes to those, save it. You can preview the email. There's also a button here for help in creating the email templates. So I would use the help function on that to, um, to get that happening. And if you've changed it and you're not happy with it, you can always reset it back to default by clicking on this button here. Uh, lastly, under the settings section, we have manage users. This is where all the users are shown in the system. You can edit users by changing names, email addresses, and their role or function. This is where you can also turn off their access. You can't delete a learner, uh, de you can't delete a user, you can only turn off their access. Um, users who are in the system are linked to a, a range of other things around the learners that have been invited by them or the learners that they've done reports on. So they can't be deleted, but if you do turn off their access by toggling this switch, um, there's no way they can access the system uh, in any way, shape or form, but their name stays in the user field. So just be sure that you um, are aware of that. If you want to add a new user, it's as simple as clicking add user, put in the user's first name, surname, email address, and select a role for them. Once you hit save, that'll send a temporary email, a set of temporary password out to the user, announcing that they've been set up as a user within the system, and they'll be able to access it from there based on the level of, um, uh, whether what level of uh, role you give them within the system. Uh, lastly, analytics. Um, so the analytics is essentially a just a bit of a function showing you how many quizzes have been completed, the average time they've taken, how many courses have been created, how many units you've analysed, reports generated. Um, there are graphs and those types of things for all of this, things like staff logins, and you can export an analytics report that you can look at at any time um, to use it from there. So essentially that's the systems and overview for administration users. As I said earlier, please ensure that you have a look at the step-by-step um, -step instructions on how to use the, the system. The only other thing that would be relevant to administration users, which we touched on in the previous video, is the LLM resources. Um, some of the resources in here is along the lines of the quiz mapping and supplement mapping. And most importantly, the ASCRA implementation information. This document will actually give you some great guidance on how to explain how the system works as far as implementing it within your within your organisation and how to set it up within your systems. Uh, and also, for those of you who deliver VET student loans, there's a user guide for the assessment tool for VET student loans. Um, if you have any questions, you can access the help section at any time. And within the help section, uh, the stuff we talked about today, settings and all of these things are fully explained within the help as well. Uh, Apart from that, I hope you enjoy using the system and uh, if you have any questions, please contact us at support at tlrg.com.au.